We hope you find this video useful. To help support us, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. NetAngel, designed for parents, by parents. We will now talk you through, step by step, how to set up your child's first Android smart device. In this video, we are using a Samsung Galaxy S10e mobile device. Some setups may vary at the initial stage of configuration. However, the setup of the parental controls will remain the same. You've just powered on the device for the first time and as you can see you're presented with a screen that says let's go. You also have the option to change the desired language if you want to change it from English United Kingdom and that's really easy to do just select on English United Kingdom and suddenly you're presented with a drop down menu of the various languages that you can choose from. To start select the blue arrow. You're now presented with the privacy policy and the end user license agreement. As always, we would always recommend reading through these before continuing. You'll need to agree the end user license before moving on to the next stage. So if you're happy, select end user license agreement. You can also see some of the additional opt-ins if you want to. But once you're happy with this screen, just select next to continue. You're now ready to connect to your home network. So just select your desired network and then type in the password and select connect. You will now receive confirmation that you are connected to your home network. So in this example, I'm connected to Netgear underscore 5G EXT. So one thing I want to just highlight at this stage is it doesn't matter what network your child is connected to, whether that's within the home environment, outside of that on a friend's network, or even whether it's connected to a mobile network. Once the parental controls have been set up and configured, your child will not be able to change them without your permission, regardless of the network that they are connected to. Select Next to continue. Your Android device will now check, install and set up the latest updates. You are now presented with Copy Apps and Data. You would only use this if you wanted to copy the data from a previous smart device and you want to transfer the data across. In this instance, we're not doing it, so we want to select Don't Copy. So you're now presented with the Google sign-in screen. So this is where if you had an existing Gmail account, you could sign in. But in this instance, we're going to create an account for our child. So go ahead and select Create Account and select For My Child. Please note, after entering your child's date of birth, if you select For Myself at this stage, you will get a message saying Get Help From A Parent. This is because your child is younger than the age of 13. If you've agreed to let your child use the full YouTube application instead of YouTube Kids, then you'd need to set the date of birth making them older than the age of 13. If you decide you want to go ahead with this, we would highly recommend installing a third party parental control application, such as Microsoft Family, which is a free application, or McAfee Family Safe, which is a subscription based application, both of which we cover within our YouTube channel. So by setting up the phone for the child, it'll help choose what's okay to explore, buy and watch, see how much apps are used and remotely lock devices when it's time to play, study or sleep. Select yes to continue. Now enter your child's first and last name. Select go to continue. Now enter your child's date of birth. You're now given the option to enter your child's gender. But if you don't want to, just select I'd rather not say. Select next to continue. You're now presented with some auto-generated login IDs that you can use. However, if you want to create your own, just select create your own Gmail address. Now start typing your desired user ID for your child. And this will create a Gmail address. But as you can see in this instance, selecting next, it will tell me that this username is already taken and to try another. So go ahead and enter a different user ID. And once you've done this, select next to continue. And as you can see, this one isn't taken and I'm now required to enter a password and confirm that password. Once complete, select next to continue. 
So as you can see, it's recognised from the child's date of birth that your child is under the age of 13. And it's stating that it needs to be linked to a parent's account. So this is where you would enter your Gmail account details to continue to link the account. Alternatively, if you don't have a Gmail account, simply go to gmail.com and create an account. So go ahead and enter your Gmail details to continue. So you're now presented with parental consent, family link disclosure for parents of children under the age of 13. So though this is quite a long read, we would always recommend to go through each of the sections. And once you've come to the end of it, to continue, just select I agree. Once agreed, you're then presented with one final confirmation. And as you can see, you can choose more options to change your child's personalization settings and the information saved on their account. So go ahead and select more options. Once you've read through the more options, you can then go and make any changes bespoke to your child and then just click agree to continue. If you agree with the parental controls, type your account password and select go to continue. Thank you for watching part one. We hope you found it useful. Now watch part two to find out how to set the appropriate age ratings for Google and enable content filters for internet browsing. Help us to continue to bring awareness to parents and guardians alike. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.